Hey guys, it's May May, and I have received so many emails and messages lately of people asking me to tell them what they need for a beginner stamping kit or the supplies they need to start stamping and card making. So today's video is going to be stamping and card making supplies needed. That's what I'm going to say. Beginner or not. I think these are the supplies I use and I'm not a beginner. So if you are a beginner, it gives you a list. And if you're not a beginner, it shows you what I use. And if you're interested, you can. Now, as I said in my video the other day, I sell most of these items in my store because I love them. This is not a ad to sell you anything. This is just me showing you what I use, what I suggest. And if you would like to get them, they're available. I will put the links in the blog post that we link in the description below. Okay, my favorite, most important tool for paper crafting period is my trimmer. Let me show you. I'm going to start with it because I may spend a little time on it, but here's the thing about my trimmer. I love this one. It's by Cricut. It's called the Cricut Portable Trimmer. It's, I started using this one um, at least two years ago now, and what I mostly love about this, there's a lot of things I love about it, but what I mostly love about it is this arm. This arm is very sturdy. It is not going to wiggle on you. It's not going to cause your blade to get offline. There's a lot of trimmers out there and I have used a lot of them and I have a lot of reviews of them on my channel. I even used a bunch of them for a long time that I thought I was in love with only to find out that this guy right here makes me happy. Let me show you this. So there are some trimmers that when you use them, if you wiggle your hand left or right, this plastic or acrylic arm is not strong enough to hold your hand in place and to keep it from cutting a curve in your paper. Now that's not the end of the world. However, when you're card making and you're cutting a base and you're folding it over, any little bit that you're off is gonna be obvious. That's the first thing I love about it. The second thing I love about it, or another thing I love about it, see these little marks right here? This makes this one so easy for you to line it up if you wanna cut inside, like if you wanna cut a window out of a piece of cardstock, or maybe you wanna cut a, a rectangle for some reason. These guys make it so easy to line things up and the ruler is easy to use on the side because it's so easy to read, okay? The other thing I like, blade changing is super easy. All you do with this closed, you just pop this little guy up like this. So your blade stays down. You're never touching the blade. You don't have to. You lift this up, you remove this guy. That's your little blade there, okay? It is a um, like a like a razor blade, basically. See how it's kind of to a point? Um, mine looks like it has a chip on it. That's not good, but it has, a, it goes to a point like that. Okay. And it cuts up and down, which is important. So you don't have to touch the blade. You just place it back into that little, uh, cut line, close this guy down, and then put this guy back on top and you press it pretty firm. Don't press it too firm or it won't slide well, but it does work itself back into the slide when you put it on there. That's how easy that is. The other thing I like is on the back of it, it has blade storage. That's what this is. This is Brenda Berry's. I didn't realize that. <laughs> it has blade storage back here. And it also has the opportunity to use a scoring blade if you would like. So there's another blade that fits in here. It's a little black blade. It doesn't have a cut. It just has a little like a nib for you to score with. So you can use this as you're cutting and scoring. I don't. I find that I like to use two separate tools for that. That's just the way my brain works, but you can. Now, the other thing I love, this grid that you probably think you'd never use, not true. It is easy to read. It's in quarter of an inch segments, makes it super easy. There's not a whole bunch of lines going in all different directions and all this stuff. And the ruler is so easy to read. Do you see how clearly marked on this white trimmer it is? I love that. It even gives you imperial measurements. So you have both. When the arm comes out, it extends all the way to 15 inches. I've never used it to go that far out. The most I ever go is like 11 or 12 because of the cardstock that I use, but it will go to 15 inches. And I just love this guy. This arm is nice and sturdy. When it closes, it doesn't just close behind it. It actually kind of locks into a little spot. See the little spot right there? Kind of locks into a spot and keeps it enclosed. It has nice grippy feet so it doesn't roll around everywhere. I love it. It's funny that I have Brenda's. One thing that will happen is when you're cutting paper, fibers will gather in your little uh, cut, your trim line. So you want to clean that every now and then. Other than that, I love it. I use it for chipboard. I have lately been using one for chipboard and one for paper. I did because they're so affordable, by the way. 
don't buy this one from me. Buy this one from Cricut.com. Use my coupon code MayMay10 and get 10% off and free shipping. Um, I think it's over $50 when you spend $50 or more on Cricut. But um, the information for that will be in the description below. And you can use my coupon code there and get these for so cheap. When they go on sale, you just can't beat it buying it from Cricut. We do carry them in my store, and I carry the replacement blades. But I tell everybody all the time, get them from Cricut. It's less expensive. So there you go. I love this guy. That's the Cricut trimmer. Now, the next thing I think you need along the lines of the trimmer is the scoreboard. Now, as a card maker, you don't need more than this. This is plenty. This guy right here goes out to five and a half, and it comes down here to seven, okay? I rarely use this side of the ruler anyway, but this goes all the way out to five and a half, and this is a mini scoreboard. What most mini scoreboards are gonna offer you on the back is an envelope maker, and this one does. It has a little envelope maker um, information here, so you can use this board to make envelopes as well as use it for scoring. And this particular one also comes with some little embossing spots if you wanna use those. I never use this side. They're cute, but I never use them. Um, there are multiples to choose from. There's two that I love, but this is the one I've started to gravitate to more than the other one. This one is by We Are, the other one's by EK Success. I'll link both of them for you so you can decide. And you might be wondering, why do you have this black line drawn down the middle? Well, anytime I'm wanting to line up maybe like a piece of cardstock on an angle like this, maybe I wanna score it on the diagonal, I can do this because having this black mark at the top lets me know that's the same channel that I'm in. And if I come to the bottom, I'm also in the channel down here. Now you're probably thinking, do I really need a scoreboard? No, you can score with lots of things. I have shown you all kinds of, matter of fact, I have a hack video I'm gonna link below. You can score with your ruler, you can score with pen nibs, all kinds of things you can score with. But if you're asking me what supplies you should put on your list, this is one you should have on your list. You will love it. It does help with paper. Sometimes the papers you buy are gonna be really thick or really thin, and you being able to score and just kind of help the fibers of the page to be able to fold smoother, it really does make things easier. For card making, honestly, you can get away without one of these because you pretty much only score the fold of a card. Not all the time, but most of the time. But for 3D projects with paper, you really do need one. And if I was making 3D projects, I'd get the big guy because I feel like the 12 by 12 is a much better option for that. Like if you're making baskets or boxes or things like that, this is not gonna be big enough unless you're making mini versions, okay? So this is a needed tool. The other thing you need. These guys come with an embossing tool that I never know where it is. I have no idea where it is because we don't use them. They get taken off of here, put aside because I don't want them to get in my way or whatever. So I just take it off, put it aside. I don't know where it is. So this is what I like to use. This is a double-ended embossing tool. What I like about this is this big ball on the end here. This ball rests on top of that channel. It does not go down into the channel. The smaller one will. You don't want to use that one because it'll sink into the channel and you'll cut your paper, not score it. But this ball rests on top of the channel and it gives you a really nice smooth score. I like it. I like it better than using a bone folder for scoring because this goes into the channel as well and I found over time I would cut my paper more than I would get a good score. So I suggest a double-ended embossing tool, okay? Love this guy. This medium um, tip is really, really good. Now then, let's talk about bone folders since we're here. You do need a bone folder or something that can act like a bone folder. In my hack video, I show you that you can use a ruler to act like a bone folder as well. But what this does is it allows you, whenever you crease paper, to be able to crease it down nice and snug. You'll be surprised how well and how often you'll use these guys. It's great for creasing. So a bone folder is a good thing to have in your stash. I personally like this one because I like the way it fits in my hand, but there are so many different kinds out there. A lot of people like the Teflon kind. I think they're expensive, so I don't have one of those, but they're probably super nice. But this is the one I use. I think it works really well. It's by EK Success. Fits in my hand good. I like the way it creases. And I only use it for creasing paper. I don't use it for scoring. So that's probably why this one doesn't bother me too much. All right, what's next? Scissors. I like my cutter bees for my stamping and card making. This is what you would use for fussy cutting. This is great for snipping little edges of paper off, things like that. You're gonna need a good pair of snips, okay? There's lots to choose from. I just think these cutter bees are great. Um, they have a nice sharp point. They come with a cover, but I always lose my cover. But they have a little cover. 
And um, this is great to take on a crop, to take in your, um, if you want to go carry your stuff with you or keep everything in one little box for when you're making things, these fit perfectly. Love these guys. You're going to need some snips. Um, along the lines of cutting, this is a little more expensive than like, when you say beginner, you think that you're looking for inexpensive tools, but truth be told, now honestly, I want you to hear this. I would rather spend a little more as a beginner on my tools so that I can see that I'll really enjoy this versus buy something that is subpar and then I fight with it so much and I have to upgrade it. So really, instead of spending you know, five or six dollars on one embossing tool, I mean one blade, for example, I might spend eleven dollars on a good blade and then I know I'm always going to be able to use it. So, and we'll talk about that again in a minute, but sometimes looking for a cheaper alternative is not the better. And I know if you're a crafter, you know what I'm talking about and you'll mention this in the comments below because I probably spent more money buying things that were like the good tools than go ahead and spending five or six more dollars and getting the good tools. And so you still end up upgrading. So even though you're a beginner, you'll have better luck if you buy tools that are nicer in the beginning. I found this, I saved money actually if I had done it myself because all the stuff I bought before I don't use anymore because they were all kind of not disposable, but kind of disposable. So this is a good example of that. This is a pen blade, okay? These are a little more expensive, but they are awesome. The blade comes out like this, and you have this really nice um, point. They come in different points, actually. They come in three different ones, and you can choose. Now, they used to come in a three-pack. Now, they come individually, so you can choose what blades you like. Um, you're going to need, like, a craft knife because there will be times you'll want to, like, cut something off that's kind of hanging off the edge or there might be a place you need to use one so I suggest go ahead and get in one of these guys it also has which is really neat has this little ruler on the end I've never used it for anything but there is a little ruler it's like th um, three inches long yeah three inches so I don't know it's there for you all right this guy which is on back order right now we are trying to get these in at the time I'm filming this video so if you're watching this later these may be available but this is a pokey tool and I found these from watching other crafters and realizing how universally useful this guy is what I mostly like to use it for is when I'm removing sticky back tape this is a perfect way to get that out it's great for poking holes because I can poke small holes in things. It's also great for trying to thread things through. You can use it to help you thread things. But you'd be surprised how much you need a pokey tool. Just about everything I do, even not crafting, a lot of times I'll be doing something to go, I wish I had my pokey tool because this guy works for everything. Now the spatula, I don't use the spatula on the end for hardly anything. There have been times that I've used it, but I really like the pokey tool end. Okay, and honestly, it's not called a pokey tool, by the way. It's called a die release tool because it's actually made for releasing paper out of dies whenever you're doing die cutting. We'll get to that if we do that video, but for now, a pokey tool. Okay, um, let's talk about pencils and pens. These are what I would suggest, okay? A good pencil, and I like a mechanical pencil, and I lean toward these because I used these when I was in um, school and we did drafting when I was in high school. I fell in love with these pencils then. Um, this is a Pentel P207, and I just love this pencil, I, and I love the way the eraser is. It's small, compact, and hidden under here, so I love that. The other thing is a white pen. You're going to see so many people use these. A lot of crafters made these very popular. And this is a Uniball Signo, and it's the color, um, I think it's called coconut, coconut white, I think. But this is very useful for you know, all kinds of stuff. Like if you're stamping a little bear and you want to put a little dot in his eyes to make his eyes be brighter, or if you want to do white stitching, or if you want to do snow, just so many things you can use with the white pen. So you need, you need to consider a white pen. Now, there's lots of different, there's also these in black. We have this one in um, black, red, silver, and gold. So we have those also. But I have fallen in love with this Illustrated Faith pen. This is my favorite. They come in a two-pack. Let me show you. They come in this two-pack, and you get one that is a .25 and one that's a .65. I love this .65 pen. Look at this nib. I'm going to put my hand behind it so you can see it. Look how chunky that is, and I love it for stitch lines. I just think it does a really good job. So there's that one, and like I said, you get these in a two-pack. So the .25 is super, super fine. So if you're looking for something like that, this is a bonus that comes with it, but this is now my go-to black pen. Love it. All right. Now let's talk about adhesive. Let's talk about adhesive. So you're going to need a good wet glue. Okay, you're going to need a good dry glue, 
and you're going to need a good uh, dimensional tape, all right? In card making, these are the three things I like to use the most. This is really all the adhesive I use now. There's one more, but we'll get to that. So this is Art Glitter Glue. At the time I'm filming this video, it's winter time, and we don't ship this when it is 40 degrees or colder between us and the person buying it. However, it's starting to warm up a little bit here, so if you want to call in using our website, you can call in and see if we can ship this to you. This comes in all different sizes. This is the one ounce. Mine is very loved. Look at my little um, sticker. This is the one ounce bottle. I happen to love this one because it comes with its own fine tip. The trick with Art Glitter Glue First off, it's amazing. Secondly, you need a fine tip. A chunky or a really open tip is not good. The more, you don't need very much. You need so little of it. Like, you just need this tiny little thin bead of it. So you wanna use something with a fine tip. This option, there's actually a video. I'll link a video to tell you all about Art Glitter Glue. But this option comes with its own little tip and I don't have to add one to it. And that's really why I like it. I use this one all the time. I just buy a refill and refill this one over and over. This is a stopper topper. This is not a beginner situation. You can, this comes with its own cap and you don't need this, but these are super cute. And this is what we use them for to keep our glues from drying out. It's super cute. I love the angel, it's brand new. Art Glitter Glue. That's the only glue I use for my paper crafting. I will say this, a lot of people say, but um, how do I keep my paper for warp from warping? Paper warps when it gets wet, okay? The reason this works so well and keeps the warping down is because you need so little of it to work. And that's the thing. There is no glitter in it, by the way. It's, it's made by the company Art Glitter, but there's no glitter in it. It's amazing. Sticky tape. This comes in three sizes. I only have two in here. Well, actually, comes in four sizes. This is about three quarters of an inch wide. This is about a quarter of an inch. And then we have um, an eighth of an inch. And then we also have it in full sheets. Now, here's the thing about this tape. This was introduced to me by my friend at Craft Chameleon. She's the one who sent this to me the first time. I fell in love with it. It's awesome. You don't need scissors. It tears by just tearing it. You don't need to um, have anything special to do that with. It just tears like this. It's amazing. I love it. You get a whole bunch for the price. And I, I have all three sizes. If I were going to have only one size, I would get the eight millimeter because it's in between the quarter, or it's in between the eight and the three quarter, and that's a really good size if you're only gonna get one of them. Now, my favorite is this one. I love this one. I use this for all kinds of stuff, this wider one, but this kind of sticky tape. Now, you think, yeah, but why do I need both? There are times when you don't want to use a wet adhesive. You'll run into them. You'll learn about those times. There's no set times. Like I can't say, don't use dry adhesive here. Don't use wet adhesive here. But one big place is if you're making pockets, you don't want to use a sticky tape for a pocket because sticky tape never dries, okay? You want to use something that will dry like this. So when you're sliding things in and out of the pocket, it doesn't catch on the side where some of the adhesive might be exposed. So that's one example and why you would need two different glues, all right? Foam tape. This one is my favorite, all right? It is expensive. This is an investment. However, it comes like this big when you first get it. It's massive. Um, this is one I have been using for a very long time. This has been to two Made It Cons. I think this one's been to two. Maybe one Made It Con and a cruise. But anyway, this guy right here is huge when you first get it. And it's wide. And what I typically do is cut it in half and use strips of it like that. But it's my fave. I love how thin it is because I can, I can double it if I want it thicker or I can use it thin. And now, like I said, this one is an investment. We also have foam squares in the store. We have other options for you. Like, for example, we have the Brutus Monroe options. Let me show you those. They come like this, big old rolls. This is the black. This is the white foam. It's a thinner foam. Let me hold it up. See how much thinner that is, like half an inch? Um, but it is chunkier. It is a thicker foam where this part is concerned. See, see how much thicker that is than my my other roll, but we have the Brutus available and we have the Scotty. We call this one Scotty because it's made by Scotch. Um, and then we also have the foam squares, but you will want something like this because this is used whenever you're popping a sentiment up. And one of the things that makes a card look really professional is to have it in layers. So you lay, raise your mats up versus raise maybe a sentiment or a focal point, And that's what this is used for. So those, those are the adhesives I use, wet, dry, and dimensional, okay? Now then, let's look at um, 
stamping. Let's start to talk about stamping, okay? I'm going to show you this. So this is, if you've never seen stamps before, these are clear stamps. And what these do is they peel off this backer and they stick to an acrylic block. And then you can ink them up and stamp them just like we used to do the traditional wood blocks with the rubber stamps. But this way you can see through them now, okay? So as a beginner card maker stamper, this set was made for you. I literally made this set for that particular person. This set has everything you can imagine on it. If you only have this one set in your collection to start with, you can send a card for every occasion, including thinking of you, I love you, with love, um, just because, get well soon, with sympathy, you name it, it's on this stamp set. This one's called All Occasions. Perfect beginner set for card making, okay? Now, if you pick up a stamp set, you need something to stamp it with. Let me show you my suggestions. I suggest, um, obviously, acrylic blocks, but let me show you. Number one, you need a one-inch block. I know it's crazy, but you need a one-inch block. If you're using sticky tape, I actually use this as my scissors. I place it down and rip my um, sticky tape with it. That's mostly what I use it for. But these guys right here are so useful. So get yourself one one-inch block, okay? You'll be surprised how much you use it. The other thing I suggest, this little set comes in a kit, okay? You get the press, which is so cool. This has got little feet. So if you want to move a stamp around before you press it down to stamp it, that's what this guy's for. And it comes with three other blocks, okay? I used to use traditional acrylic blocks that were this size, and they kind of look, they were kind of this shape, but they were like this. But when Fiskars brought these out, I fell in love with these guys. They are so easy to use, so easy to put in your hand. I love them. And this set is a great set. Let me tell you why. You get a one inch, and the reason this is called a one inch is because this is really the stamping area. These sides curve up just for you to hold it, so even though it feels bigger, it's not. It's the one inch. I think this one's like a two. This one might be a three and a half, but they say it on the packaging. The other thing, these guys are easy to hold, easy to maneuver, easy to press, but in the same package, you get these three. These are going to hold a lot of stamps. Traditionally, most of your stamps are going to fit on one of these three sizes, and this guy is going to hold just about everything else. Border stamps, um, larger stamps, and it's a press, so you get that opportunity to press the image down without having to lock in where you're putting it. Here's what I mean. With this stamp, I've got to go straight to the page, okay? With this one, it sits above the page, and I can move it around until I press, and then it stamps down. These come in one pack together, and they are awesome. I love this set. Now, this is the thing I was telling you earlier that you might want to think about. Investing. If even though you're a beginner, now this is a great beginner set and you will not be sad if this is the one you buy. You could use this one forever. You wouldn't need anything else. I love this. But it's about, it's either $13 or $19. I can't remember how much this one is. It might be $19. But if you're going to spend that kind of money and you're not very confident in your stamping, I'll show you something. And everybody's going to think I'm crazy for showing you this, but listen to me, okay? This is called a Misty. This is a stamp positioner, all right? What happens is this door is treated like the acrylic block here, okay? So the stamp, instead of sticking to the block, it sticks to this door, and then you stamp it down onto your page inside here. There's videos all about the Misty. It's M-I-S-T-I. You can check that out. Here's the thing. This is much more, much more expensive. It's a great tool. It does amazing things for stamping. And the reason I think it's great for a beginner is because it will make you like your stamping so much faster than these will. The reason is sometimes we struggle with placement or knowing how hard to press or getting shadows and things when we first start stamping. This takes all that away. So if you're going to invest $20 in something like this, you might consider, I think it's twice that for this one or maybe a little more, you might consider investing a little more in this versus this so that you can really love your stamping quicker. Now, don't come for me in the comments and tell me that I'm crazy to tell them to buy a Misty as a beginner because you've got to hear what I'm telling you. So many times a person will start stamping and not get good results and they will quit. So before you spend $20 and not like your results, you can spend, I don't know, 40 I think this is, maybe 45 and know you're going to like your results because they're going to be, you know, right every time. It's not going to be a guessing game. Just a suggestion. You don't have to pick up either one of these. It's just my thought. The reason I say this is we have a lot of people that come in our retail store and they are beginners and they ask me what to get and I'll show them this. 
But then when they see this, like if they come back in later, they go, why didn't you show me this at first? They're right. Why did I not show them this? They could have spent twice the money then and loved this tool forever versus this one. Trust me on that. I talk with people every day about that, and they tell me, you should have shown me that Misty first. I would have loved stamping better. So, But again, these are great forever. Okay, the next thing you're going to need, or the next thing I suggest is, I miss something in paper crafting. Let me tell you this. I miss telling you a good ruler. You need a great ruler. I love this one. You might like a different one. This one was introduced to me probably five or six years ago. It's really easy to read. It's the Tim Holtz ruler, and it's got this grid. It comes with a centering option. See that zero in the middle? It's a really nice ruler. has a metal edge on one side for cutting with your blade has a um, beveled edge here. See if you can kind of see, there's a beveled edge there. Makes things really easy if you want to run a pencil mark down. And it also has some holes in it if you want to do paper piercing. I should have mentioned a ruler when I was talking about tools, but that is an, um, a definite must have. Okay, stamping. You got your stamp, you got your blocks. Now you need an ink. I'm leaning to this one alone, and let me tell you why. If you're a beginner stamper, you're probably not coloring yet anyway, okay? You're probably mostly doing sentiments, maybe doing um, black and white images. You probably haven't started your collection of markers and colored pencils, etc. So because there, this is important, some markers and some color pencils and some watercolor things have to have certain inks to work, okay? But since you're a beginner, you're not worried about that right now. You just need a good ink that'll make you successful every time you stamp. This is the one, Versafine Onyx Black. Now, there are other Versafine products, and they do great as well, but this Onyx Black is going to make you look like a pro every time. This lid pops around like this. It sits like this. This pad is amazing, okay? The ink is amazing. It is a pigment ink. Don't worry about that yet. You're just getting started. It does work with watercoloring. Let me see what it tells you. Uh, da, da, da. Perfect for using watercolors to color stamped images, which is good because a lot of beginners will start with watercoloring before they get into markers. So still, this is going to last you a long time. You will not find a better sentiment stamping ink, in May May's opinion. Now, you can talk to other people and they'll tell you different, but I think this one stamps um, sentiments beautifully. This guy and this guy together, you're going to be happy. Okay? That's ink. Now, if you want colored inks, those come over time. And collect, collect good inks, okay? Don't buy, here's what you don't do. You need to trust me on this. Don't buy a $1 or $2 or $3 ink pad. I promise you, they're just not worth it. You're just wasting your time. You'll just be frustrated. When you start to get your colors, you need to invest in colors. If you want to know about, more about that, I'll be doing a video about inks again. Someone asked me today to do that, so that'll be coming soon. All right, you got your stamps, you got your blocks, you got your ink. Now you got to clean it. Couple things. All right. Old school, easy going wet wipes. You can clean your stamps with wet wipes. You can clean them with soap and water. You can clean them um, with like a microfiber towel and soap and water. All that kind of stuff. I keep wet wipes on hand because I still use them. There are times I reach for this before I do anything else. But if you're wanting to invest in your craft, this is my favorite way to clean a stamp on, as I'm stamping. Okay, so let's say I only have this is why you need this. Let's say I buy one set of blocks, okay? And I'm stamping something and I move on and I need this size block again, but my stamp is dirty. Here's what I love about this. You get you some squeaky clean. This is the best cleaner. You need to trust me on that one. Spray it on one side, okay? With your stamp on the block, rub it around and clean it. And then I rub it off over to the side to dry it. And then I can peel my stamp off put it back on the block, put another one on, and keep going. I don't have to go to the sink. I don't have to use my wet wipes, anything. I can just do this scrubby cleany right here. The other thing is, this guy comes out, so you can take this to the sink and clean it when it gets too dirty. So that's super cool. And this is the Jumbo. There's another size. Let me show you it, too. There's a smaller one that looks like this, and it's great. I used it. Look, I've used and used and used it. This pad doesn't come out. It's thinner if you want something smaller to kind of carry with you, but this is the one I lean to most often now. And Squeaky Clean, oh, it's amazing. And this is the new formulation, which is even better. You'll love it. These two right here are great for cleaning your stamps. But again, you can use soap and water. You can use wet wipes. I'm just showing you what I would suggest. This is one of those things that I would invest in. Okay. Next, where are we at? I'm looking around to make sure I've said everything. Okay, next is paper, and I'm going to make this real easy. So, as a new card maker, here's what I suggest you do. You need a good white for card bases, 
You need a good craft for card bases, and I would suggest a good black. So here's the deal. I went to Brutus, to Christopher, who, who owns Brutus Monroe. He is the designer developer. I was talking to him, and I was like, you know what? I wish there was a paper pad with uh, a paper pack with these three pages in them. And he was like, I can do that for you. And I was so excited. So he made this exclusively for us. And let me show you what you get in it. You get white, you get craft, and you get black cardstock. These cardstocks are gorgeous. The black and the craft are 80 pounds, and the white is 110 pound. okay? That won't matter too much to you right now, but what you do need to know is this is what you wanna use for card bases, 80 to 110 pounds or more. But I would use these for card bases. And if you don't know much about card bases, you take an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, cut it in half this way or this way, and that's an A2 size card base. This is a great paper pack to start with. Now, another thing you can do is just have some good 110 pound white in your stash because you can make white card bases you make a white card all day long and so many things can go with it this is one i suggest another one i suggest is by nina and you can't buy it at my store some places still carry it but i find it at office depot it's 110 pound nina cardstock it comes in a big old ring it's really nice and it's great for your card bases so a good white a good craft and a good black those are the ones i suggest also you are just starting out, okay? Do not, you need to hear me on this, do not go to the craft store and stand in front of that aisle that has all those pages on it, all that single paper, and go, where do I start? Don't do it. Do yourself a favor. Pick yourself up a paper pack and maybe a six by six or not. Just pick yourself up one or the other. I would suggest you get a paper pack. I'm going to show you why, okay? This is awesome. These little six by sixes are basically the same thing in here. They're just cut down to smaller scale, but here's why I say a paper pack. So you get a paper pack. You've got your paper for your card base. You use this to make your mats and your layers, but these guys come with stickers, okay? So you can use these stickers to create really pretty images on the front of your card and then go to your little stamp set and add in happy birthday, you see? So maybe you wanna use this cake on the front of your card because you don't have a stamp for a cake and you don't have crayons or markers or watercolor pencils. So you take this sticker, pop it up on your phone tape on the front of your card, use this to do happy birthday and you have a birthday card. This is why I suggest this. You can use this stuff together. Now, I pulled this paper pack in particular because it's a great pack for making birthday cards, and that's a great place to start in your card making. You might not want to start with, like, sympathy cards or uh, thank you cards, but birthday cards are a great place to start because they can be whimsical and silly, and you're, you're not looking for perfection with those. So this is why I pulled this pack. This is a great one to start with. It's called Let's Party, and it's made by Echo Park. Now... The reason I say don't buy those individual pieces, I don't say don't buy them. I say don't start with them. It's too confusing. You stand there and you go, but what pound is this? And what pound is this? And yada, yada, yada. You cannot decide. This is the perfect card making weight. This paper is 65 pounds. Let me make sure I'm on you right. Uh, it doesn't say on here, but I'm pretty sure this is 65 pound paper, but it's actually not paper. It's cardstock, which makes a difference. Paper is a little harder to use in card making. You really want to stick to card stock. There's a reason for that. So this is what I would suggest. Something like this that comes with stickers that also comes with, let me show you. It also has all these cut aparts in it. These are instant card fronts, instant. Like you just cut one of these out, put it on a card, you've made a card. So that's my suggestion for paper. I'm looking around the room to see if I forgot anything. I probably forgot, oh, there is one thing. As a beginner stamper, you definitely want this. One second. I almost forgot this guy, a mono eraser. So this is an eraser that has sand in it. So when you get ink in a place on your card or your project that you don't want it when you're stamping, you can rub this over and it basically sands off the top edge or the top layer of the paper where your ink was and it gets rid of those spots where you didn't mean to stamp or maybe you had ink on your finger and you touched your card. This is awesome and it will last forever. So keep this in your stash. Keep it right where you can get um, get to it. You really need it. You might think that I would suggest a cutting mat for a card maker, but you really don't have to start with a cutting mat. The one I use is called a Vantage cutting mat. It is an 18, an 18 by 12. I just use it on my work surface and it's a great um, background for when I'm working on videos and things like that. 
I find myself using it sometimes, but not all the time. So here's what I would suggest. If you have a work surface you want to protect, this is a great thing. You definitely want this. If you're going to find yourself cutting with a knife very often, you definitely want one of these guys. But if you just protect your work surface with anything that you've got while you're starting out, you can do that. But I, pretty much everybody wants to get one of these. And this guy a, is a great price. So it's perfect. And I love this size, the 18 by 12, because I can travel with it. It's not too big to put in a suitcase. It's not too big to put into a, a rolling tote or, you know, a rolling cart or anything like that. So that's really why this size is super handy. Because if you get a really big one that covers your whole desk, it's pretty much got to stay there. Okay, I think I remembered everything. I probably didn't. So if I forgot anything else or didn't mention anything else, please mention it in the comments below so that our, our um, new stamping friends can talk about it with you. Now, here's the thing. This is beginner. Okay, this is like, if I had these things, I could make a decent, I could make a good card. If I had these tools, I could make a great card, okay? There is so much more to it, and as you get involved, you'll learn more, but it's a super fun craft. It's super fun to do, and uh, you'll find your you'll find your flow, you'll find your niche, and you'll know exactly what you want to start to collect, but this is a good way to get started. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching today. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. We'll do our best to answer them. Between me and Tamitha and all of my wonderful viewers, we'll be able to get all your questions answered. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye.